Backups are an important part of life when using any computer, and your home automation server is no different. At any time, your hard disk could fail, you might mess up a configuration file, or a rogue software update may break something. This could break your entire home automation system and plunge you back into the dark ages of having to use wall switches with your hands. The Home Assistant operating system comes with its own built-in backup and restore capabilities as part of the supervisor. This helps you keep backups of your system in case something goes bad. There are also add-ons available that will back up your entire system to Google Drive so you can recover your data if your entire hard drive crashes or your house burns down. But what about those of us who run Home Assistant Container on Docker, who don't get access to the supervisor, built-in backups, or add-ons? Well, in this video, I'll show you how you can install Duplicati. It's a really powerful and free backup system that can be run in a Docker container. I'll also show you how you can set it up to automatically backup your Home Assistant system and any of your other Docker containers directly to Google Cloud or a myriad of other places. Let's take a look. Hey, Home Automation Guy. Start the show. Duplicati is a really awesome open source backup application that has some really powerful features. These are the kind of features that you only used to see in really expensive enterprise backup solutions. Firstly, it supports doing incremental backups, which means it will only backup files that have changed since the last backup. This is great because it will reduce the amount of storage space that the backups need, and this is especially important if you're backing things up to a cloud storage provider that charges you more money if you consume more space. Here's a quick look at how an incremental backup works. The first backup you do will backup all of the files from your source computer to the destination. In this case, Google Drive. Imagine that three files are then changed on your computer over the course of the following day, and the next backup is then due to run. Well, the backup software will now only backup those three files that were changed and will back them up to a separate place. It will do this each time it backs up, making sure that you always have a copy of every file backed up but not multiple copies of the same file, which will just end up wasting space. If you need to restore some stuff from the backup for whatever reason, you can choose which versions of which files to restore, and the backup software will be smart enough to know which copy of the files it needs to restore in order to get you the right data. Secondly, Duplicati allows you to back up your files to a huge number of storage providers. You can back your files up to a different hard disk, USB drive, or upload them via FTP. Or you can use cloud storage providers like Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, Box, and many more. Thirdly, Duplicati is open source, and it runs perfectly well in a Docker container. Let's look at how we can add it to our Docker stack now. Like most other applications I run on Docker, I first use a search engine to find a Docker Compose example configuration to base my own install off. You can see that the Docker Hub has a sample snippet to create a Duplicati container. Open up your Docker Compose file, and paste this sample snippet into the bottom, being mindful that you correctly indent it. You can see here the image that it is going to use to create this container, and the name of the container itself, both of which I'm happy with. As usual, I'm going to change the data volumes that are mounted to the container so that the configuration of this container is stored in my slash op directory. And I'm also going to delete the second entry, which I don't need because I'm planning on backing up my files to Google Cloud rather than a local disk. I'm also going to map my entire slash op directory to the slash source directory in the container. Mapping my slash op directory to the slash source directory in my container will make it really easy for me to select the files and directories that I want to back up. If you've seen my previous videos about Docker, you'll know that I store all the configuration for all of my Docker containers inside the slash op directory on my host operating system. The first reason for this is that it makes it really easy to manage all the various configuration files for my containers if they're all in the one place. I can just open the slash op directory in my Visual Studio and access all the configurations from the Remote Explorer. The second reason is that it makes it even easier to back them all up if they're stored in the same place, and you'll see that in practice in a bit when we start configuring our backups. So with our Docker Compose file updated to include the Duplicati container, we'll save that file. As we've updated the Docker Compose YAML file, we'll need to rerun the docker compose up-d command on the Linux server so that it downloads the images and creates the container we've specified. Thank you to all the people who left comments in my previous video and pointed out that there's no reason to open up a different SSH client and connect to your Linux server in order to run this command. Visual Studio includes its own terminal which you can use to interact with the remote computer. And since we're already connected to it via SSH using the Remote Explorer, we can just open up this terminal and type the command directly into there. 
That's so freaking cool. I love learning new things like this. Thank you so much. After running the command, you'll see it pulling down all the images it needs to run Duplicati. And when it's done, you'll see the new directories that were created when the container was started. You can see these both listed remotely on the server and reflected in the Remote Explorer section of Visual Studio. Finally, whilst I'm in Visual Studio, I'm going to add the Duplicati web interface to my Home Assistant navigation menu using an iframe panel. This will allow me to manage all of my backups without ever leaving the Home Assistant user interface. I'll copy one of the previous entries in my configuration.yaml file and change the title, key, URL, and icon. I'll also set the require admin part to true so that only Home Assistant admins can see the Duplicati menu item. Switching over to Home Assistant, we'll open up Portainer and check that the Duplicati Docker container is listed and running correctly. A quick check of the log files shows that it started with no errors, which is good. Since we changed the Home Assistant configuration.yaml file, we also need to restart Home Assistant. After it's finished loading, we'll see the new Duplicati entry in the navigation menu. Clicking on that, if you've done everything correctly, will load up the Duplicati web interface. The first time you do that, it might ask you if you want to set a password to access the web interface. I personally think that it's a good idea, as it'll stop anyone from messing around with your backups. Follow the instructions to set a password, and then you'll need to log back into the web interface again with that password you just set. That's it. You've now got Duplicati installed, and you can start configuring your backup. To do that, we're going to click on the Add Backup link and configure a new backup. We'll give the backup a name and an optional description and choose whether or not we want encryption. It's generally good practice to encrypt your backups with a passphrase. This means that if someone gets hold of your backup files, either by hacking into your Google Drive or stealing your USB backup drive, then they won't be able to access any of the encrypted backup files. I don't bother encrypting my Home Assistant backups as they're stored on Google Drive, which is protected by two-factor authentication using a YubiKey. If someone hacks my Google Drive, then I'll have far bigger problems than someone seeing my Home Assistant configuration. All my stuff is in there. Next, we choose the destination for our backup. As I mentioned earlier, Duplicati supports a huge amount of backup destination options, but I'm going to be using Google Drive. If you want to use a different storage provider, then the process will be similar. Type the name of a folder you want your backups to be stored in. The folder name that you type in here will be created for you by Duplicati on your Google Drive. Even if you previously already created a folder with that same name on your Google Drive, Duplicati will create another one. The reason for this is the way that Google Drive permissions work. For security reasons, the permissions that are granted by Google Drive to Duplicati in the next step only allow Duplicati to see the files and folders it itself has created. That means that if you store secrets on your Google Drive in other folders, the permissions that Duplicati has will prevent it from accessing any of these other items. It makes sense when you think about it. Even if it was really frustrating for me to first figure out why I had two backup folders with the same name on my Google Drive, one of which had backups in it and the other of which was empty. We now need to give Duplicati permission to access my Google Drive by clicking the Auth ID link to the left. This will connect Duplicati to Google Drive and allow it to access any of those files and folders that it creates, as I just mentioned. Follow the instructions on your screen to log into your Google account and allow it to connect. If it all worked well, then you should see a token in the Auth ID box and you can test the connection to confirm it is working. The first time you click the test button, it will ask you if you want to create that folder, click yes. Now we get to choose what files we want to back up. And this is where you can see why I mapped the entire slash op directory to the source directory on the container. Expand the computer option and scroll down until you see the source directory. If you expand this, you should see the same thing that we saw when we listed out the contents of the slash op directory on our host computer. If we browse in here a bit, we can see all of our Home Assistant configuration. But we don't just want to back up our Home Assistant though, so we'll select the entire source directory as our source data for this backup. If we wanted to, we could exclude certain files and folders using the filter options. This is especially useful for excluding large files that may not be important to be backed up, like CCTV camera footage or movies that you may have in your Plex Media Server library. Click Next and we can choose when this backup will be run. I like to run my backups every single day, and I run them early in the morning whilst I'm asleep. Running a backup can be quite resource intensive and may cause your home automation server to slow down. It can also create some really large backup files which need to be uploaded to Google Drive over your internet connection. That's why I run them at 2am, because I'm probably not going to be using my internet then. Finally, we can choose a few extra backup options. 
I keep the remote volume size at the default 50 megabytes because it seems to work well for Google Drive. I do, however, set the backup retention options to delete any backups older than 30 days. The thought is that if I make a mistake or something breaks, then I'm probably going to notice it within a month. Any backups older than that will be deleted to save storage space on my Google Drive. Duplicati is smart enough to re backup any of the files that get purged out of Google Drive so that the incremental backups always contain a copy of everything that you're trying to protect. There are some advanced options available to be set here, but I haven't a clue what any of them do, and I personally never had to use any of them. Click the Save button, and you'll need to confirm that you're OK continuing without encryption, which I am. We now have the backup listed in the Home tab, and we can see that it's scheduled to run tomorrow at 2 a.m. We can also use the Run Now link to run a backup immediately. This is really useful to run a manual backup of Home Assistant or any other container before you make a configuration change or update. When you run the backup, you'll see the status updating on the screen in real time. And after the backup is complete, you'll see that it also verifies all of the files to make sure that everything has been backed up OK. Once the backup is finished, you can click on the title to get access to more options. You can edit the backup configuration, which basically takes you back through the entire backup setup wizard that we just did, allowing you to alter any of the source or target information, as well as all of the other options. You can also look at the log files to see information about the backup that just ran. You'll be able to see how many files were backed up successfully and how many failed. It's normal to see warnings about files that couldn't be backed up, especially if they're database files that are open and in use. I'm not personally worried about them as I'm more interested in backing up the configuration of all of my containers rather than their specific state. If we switch over to our Google Drive folder that the backups are stored in, you can see it's created a bunch of zip files. If you open these zip files up, you'll see a load of random stuff inside that no human can understand. These backup files are basically impossible to restore without using the Duplicati application. If your entire hard drive crashes and you need to rebuild your system from scratch, you'll need to take care of installing the Linux operating system, Docker, and recreating the Duplicati container yourself. You can then point the new Duplicati at your existing backup files and it'll be able to restore the rest of your Docker Compose file and specific container configuration. To do a restore, you use the Restore tab inside Duplicati. If you're recovering from a catastrophic failure, you can point Duplicati at the restore files themselves, like I just mentioned. If you just want to restore one or two files, because you messed something up or a particular Docker container broke, you can use the last option, which loads up the backup configuration we created earlier. Now you choose which files you want to restore. In this example, I'm going to restore my Home Assistant configuration and automations YAML files. You can also choose which version of the files you want to restore. This is useful if you messed up a configuration a few days ago, but didn't notice until today. You can go back and restore the file versions from last week when you know everything was working properly. Click continue and you can choose where the files get restored to. You can choose to restore them into the same place that they were backed up from, or you can choose to restore them to somewhere else so you don't override anything. You can also choose to restore them into the same location, but with a different name. I'm going to pick the second option here and restore the files into the same directory but with a different name. Once the restore is complete, we can switch back to our Visual Studio and you can see the restored configuration and automation YAML files with the backup date added to their names. I can open either of these files up and copy and paste any parts from them that I messed up. I can also select two of the files, right click on them and click compare to see the difference between these two files. This might help me troubleshoot why an automation or configuration stopped working suddenly. Hopefully you can see that this Duplicati setup is almost as easy, but way more powerful than the backup and restore capabilities that come with the supervisor in the Home Assistant operating system. I use this method to backup my Docker containers, including Home Assistant, and it saved my sanity on a couple of occasions when I've accidentally broken parts of my home automation setup. It's also especially important to make sure you have solid backups before you update Home Assistant or any other containerized Docker application to a new version. Speaking of updates, my next video is going to show you how I keep Home Assistant and all my other containers up to date and running the latest version. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that together we can make your home smarter.